morning. Good morning. What a wonderful day it is. And you can imagine like for us Canadians waking up the other day and see that the first trees are blooming. <laughs> it's February. Um, are you kidding me? That is so beautiful. And when you come into to the church and you have all these trees in front of the church blooming, this is like a symbol, like a sign for us why we are here. It's, it's a sign for new life to start. And we are here coming together to live in that new life, to, be, to grow in that new life that we have received from God through Jesus Christ. So let us grow, let us live that new life uh, that we have been given. Today, after um, our worship service, we are going to have our annual meeting. Yay! <laughs> no, I mean it. Yay! <laughs> it should be, it, it could be, and it will be, not just a dragging, uh, we, have to, we have to listen to numbers that we don't understand anyhow. Um, and then in the end we all say, yay, and can go home, watch Super Bowl. Um, hopefully get a little bit to in a conversation today about this church um, and about our future here. So, looking forward to that. Uh, and you're not getting, going to get home before we're done. Um, I have, I have already people set up to close the doors. <laughs> yeah, you know the drill, right? So then, um, two weeks from now, we will have our first concert after, during COVID again. Um, and it is the Dueling Organs concert. It's not the Dueling Organists. <laughs> So I don't think that Tom and, um, and Walt will be there and <laughs> be ready to shoot each other. Um, so th this is um, two weeks from now, uh, 4 p.m., it's a free concert. Please spread the word, invite people. Um, you have to be vaccinated and boosted to come. Um, and uh, mask will be still mandatory, which will stay also for the church while the mask mandate in California is being lifted. We will continue to do what we do right now for the time being until numbers are safely down in our county. <laughs> so we have another thing. Now I for, of course forgot what I wanted to bring. So we do have a new recycling container out there in front of the, on the other side of the wall of the office. Um, this is uh, from um, the Nevada uh, Rotary Club and um, Nevada City, Nevada County, something, it's on there. Um, and um, they are um, collecting plastic film, like the stuff that you cannot put into recycling. Usually it all goes into landfill. So the trick here is, is that only the, the plastics that are stretchable, you know, like when you put your finger on the plastic and you push, it stretches a little bit. Only those can go in there. Everything else, not. So please, uh, at home, try to get these things out of landfill and um, they are actually used for um, those um, tracks um, um, compost, uh, no, not compost, <laughs> composite, <laughs> composite um, 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 deck um, boards. That's what, what it's going to be used for, so it will have a longer life like that. All right, and let's take a deep breath and come to the presence of God to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all the hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily, worthily, worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are bad to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in <coughs> sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 5 through 10. These verses compose a poem that is part of a collection of wisdom sayings that contrast two ways of life. Life with God brings blessing. The power and vitality of God is active in our life. Life without God brings a curse. The power of death. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 1 responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It, it is not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed.
gospel according to the Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that, that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. sure what, what world Jesus was living in, um, but is it really true that um, the poor are truly rich and the rich are truly poor? Is it true that the hungry get their fill while the full will go empty-handed, and that those who are weeping will have to hold their belly because they cannot stop laughing? Hmm. You know, it's one of those readings when, when you hesitate a little bit to end it with the gospel of the Lord, gospel meaning the good news, and meaning woes to people. What Jesus is proclaiming here is the opposite of all we hold true. It is the opposite of what we see happening in this world where the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, where the hunger in the world never seems to go away, it just seems to get worse, despite all the efforts to feed the people. And nothing really ever seems to change. Not in our time, not thousand or two thousand or whatever time ago. Jesus is turning all our principles and values upside down. Imagine, I invite you now to stand on your head and to see the world from this different perspective. <laughs> this is what Jesus is doing here. He's turning the world and everything upside down. Jesus is even challenging our understanding of what it means to be blessed. I talked about this not a long time ago. I, I, imagine, like, I mean, who of us would go to a homeless person and say, oh, brother, you are blessed. <laughs> that would not feel right, would it? But we, on the other hand, say, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm, I'm living a good life, I have a house, I have, everything is in order, everything is great, I, I'm blessed by God. And Jesus tells us this is not true. He says it's the other way around. And this is not easy to understand. It's not only the prosperity gospel preachers who, who talk about this, who believe that being blessed by God means to have a good life, health, wealth, success, and material blessings. We do the same thing. I do the same thing. And it comes so easy for my mind, I'm feeling blessed. 
And I mean it, yes, and I'm sure that somehow it's God's doing, but Jesus says this might be true for the world, but it might not be true in the, for the kingdom of God where things are different. So how should we understand it? I'd rather go with Matthew's um, um, way of, of, of doing the, the Beatitudes um, much easier. <laughs> Thing is, one can be wealthy, rich, and but at the same time can be poor. Because you are lonely and you're missing out of life and, and love, and you always have to doubt yourself, are my friends my friends or are my friends the friends of my money? Could it be that our desire, our desire to always increase one's wealth, could it be that it comes from an emptiness inside that we are trying to fill with stuff, with things? Instead of saying, we know that we, we, we are loved by God, we don't need all these things. We are still trying to fill it with stuff. Someone can be filled with good things, eat the best of the best, all you can eat until it comes out of your ears. And you still can be empty inside hungry for purpose and meaning. And I wonder, are we, in our society, are we trying to still a different kind of hunger when we overeat and eat the wrong things? The hunger to be loved, to be accepted, and to be valued for who we are. Could it be I'm, I'm asking questions here, right? I'm not giving you answers. <laughs> could, could it be that um, the pursuit of happiness, you know, this, well, I guess, ultimate goal of life, to have fun and to be happy, could that have come to a dead end? And then the opioid crisis we are experiencing in North America, is part of it. And people start to realize it and, and have no way out, no, no, no really meaning in their life, and so they just try to at least be, huh, to drown the not being happy for a short time and feel better for a while. And then the thing that Jesus is talking about. Um, that it's not a good thing to be respected and liked by others? Like, what's wrong about that? I, I want to be liked. I, yes, of course. It, it's much nicer if people like you than they, if they don't, right? Well, life is so much nicer, so much more fun. The <laughs> thing only is that sometimes we bend ourselves and our beliefs to tell others what they want to hear just for the sake of being liked or being part of a group or not being singled out or thought, well, you're weird. Even if it does not comply with our values or our beliefs. <laughs> we, we made a mistake um, these days. Um, I've never watched that, but we're actually watching don't fire me. Um, <coughs> we're watching Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this is a good lesson. This is a good lesson of deceit, <coughs> of lying, of, of really looking in someone's face and saying, I really, I, I really think we are bonded somehow and I really like you and we really should make a pact by right thinking. The next thing is I'm going to vote you out of this game. Um, just making sure you're not voting against me. And it is, it's crazy. And, and then, then people say, I'm learning lessons for life here. <laughs> and I say, oh, what? Really? This is, <clears throat> this is how you want to live your life? But truth be told, this is how, how much of life is in our society. It's pushing, it's shoving, it's bullying, just for the sake 
to, to, go, to go ahead. And the people, the person that's in my way, has to be pushed out of the way. Because I want to win that million dollars. I want to have, um, have that um, position. Um, and I don't want the other one to get it. Well, it's a good lesson to watch survival. <laughs> Jesus is inviting us <coughs> to a very different life. Very different from what our society, what our world is actually telling us. Jesus is inviting us to plant the trees of our life close to the waters of God. Jesus is inviting us to put God at the center of our life and to make these upside down values of God's our own and to see how much more fulfilling it is to live according to God's standards to be close to God than all the money all the world uh, all the wealth in the world or the greatest career could ever give you and it has to do with making choices yes we, we are all transplanted into God's kingdom we are through our baptism and through our faith we are part, we are members of God's kingdom. We are part of it. But then again, we also need to choose God again and again and again. We need to choose to make God's values our own, to not pursue material things, but to pursue God and justice and love in the world. We need to choose to live in the grace that saved us in the first place when we live with God planted by the streams of God's living water we don't need riches to be happy we don't need stuff to feel safe we don't need a huge bank account I know it's like I'm fighting with this um, I'm going towards retirement right um, and, and you, you get every, every other day, you get either mail or email telling you how much money you need to retire safely. And it gets you, can get you worried, right? I guess you all have been there, or you all, maybe you might be there, it can get you worried. Is it enough? Is it enough? It's never enough. We all need every, always a little bit more. How about we actually put our trust in God and not our bank accounts? And no, this is, this is hard stuff. This is hard stuff, but it, it makes living so much lighter, so much easier to trust in God. I'm not saying we should give all, you, you should um, dissolve all your investments now and um, give, give, give them away. I'm not saying that. <clears throat> but just take that step back and say, I trust in God and, and not my the money that I have accumulated over the years. I trust that God will make it good, not what I have. We can be generous with the things that are given to us. When we live and, and know that God values us as who we are, as a person, called us by name in our baptism, we don't need to be someone because we already are someone in God's eyes. And, and by the way, uh, we don't have to look 20 or 30 years younger than we actually are. <laughs> Despite the cosmetic industries um, telling us that this is um, that we need to do this. We don't have to be underweight to be happy. No. And we don't have to be underweight to be confident and beautiful either. And don't anyone let, let anyone tell you that you have to be young to be cool and that being cool ends with 30. <laughs> People of God, you are cool. <laughs> this upside down kingdom of God is challenging. It's challenging our values and our understanding of life. And we do have to reevaluate our priorities because we can have it all and still miss out on the most important and lasting things. 
To be blessed is to be is to live with God. To be blessed is to choose God over everything else. To be blessed is to make God values our own. Amen. Those who govern, that they lead with humility. 
inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet, sustain truth-tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Send your blessings and mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer, especially Pastor Mom, Susie, Helen, Sonia, Mary Ann, the families of Barbara Jarvis and Trudy Meyer, Beth, Myrna, Dave, Joanne, Alan, Susie, Carla, Krista, Bob, Crystal, Caroline, Andrea, Doris, and those we name now before you. God of grace, renew this generation in our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future you are preparing. Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, Christ is raised from the dead. And so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who have lived and died in hope of eternal life with you, especially Trudy Meyer and Barbara Jar Jarvis. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
and serve the Lord. Praise be to God. Thank you. 